Hi everyone, my name is Alyssa. I read. Welcome to my channel. And in this video, I'm going to be reading New York Times bestsellers. So I'm specifically picking books from the New York Times bestsellers list, but I'm picking fiction. And I went and looked for the list of December 10th, 2023 and picked from that list. So if you've never looked at the New York bestsellers list, there's multiple lists within this big list of specifically combined fiction, specifically print and eBooks. There's a hardcover fiction section, a paperback fiction, and there's also lists for young adults, mass paperback, different lists for all the different types, formats and genres. I decided to pick a few from this massive list and read and see how I think about them. So I took a look, I looked within the fiction. So I looked within the combined print and eBook the hardcover and the paperback. I also looked on the young adult hardcover, the young adult paperback, and then the mass market. Those are the main lists I usually consult. There's also nonfiction lists of, as well, but I looked at those lists specifically to pick the books to read for this video. So there was a total of 49 books and I specifically looked at books that were like first in a series or standalones. There was one book I read out of order. Yeah, so let's just, get on with the video and start reading these books. Hi everyone. So I am halfway through The Christmas Spirit by Debbie McComber. And honestly, I'm so surprised <laughs> how much I'm enjoying this book. This is like very much a Christian fiction, which I was not anticipating because it's publicly, sorry, it is, it's traditionally published. So it's published by Random House. I just wasn't anticipating all the Christian language in here. But when you start hearing about like what it's actually about it kind of makes sense but um so we're following two characters who are best friends peter and hank they grew up together they became best friends in high school and as they become adults they still keep in touch they get together once a month for lunch and stuff and one is a pastor and one is runs the local tavern and they were both complaining how like their jobs are so hard and they were comparing how each of their jobs are and they believe the other person has it easy so they decide to switch places so they decide to switch places for a week leading up to christmas i shouldn't have been surprised that it's very like christian focused but I kind of thought they would, I don't know, be more surface level, but they're very much a lot of language about like having faith in God and they kind of like push the narrative that the pastor is like not like other pastors. He cares about people. He's not judgmental and things like that. So if religious themes make you uncomfortable, this may make you feel uncomfortable, but I'm a Christian myself. So I'm actually enjoying that part of the story. It's a very sweet story, which I anticipated like just based on the cover, it just seems like a very light and easy read probably a little bit of romance which there is so it's obviously dual perspective we're following two different stories we're following Hank who is the tavern owner who is taking on the pastoral role and then Pete who's the pastor who's taking on the tavern role and you know they face different challenges they both fall in love and I'm really enjoying it I'm liking both narratives I'm enjoying both love stories One one is kind of like a hate to love. One is honestly like flirt to convert, which is so funny. You know, reading from a pastor's perspective, like I'm kind of glad that he's more down to earth, not judgmental. And he's like cares about people and he's not judging people, which I find really helpful. And I do like the twist that, you know, a pastor is working in a bar essentially and getting to know the community. Yeah, I'm really enjoying it. The romances are pretty good. The pastor is actually falling for someone who's down on their luck. She was kicked out when she was 18. She got pregnant. She lost the baby, but she's always been on her own ever since. And he just like feels for her and starts to fall for her and then Hank is falling for Pete's sister and they've always kind of like hated each other or at least she's hated him um and I'm just liking it. it's really sweet it's a little bit like maybe a little too sweet but I don't mind that for this time of year I don't know during the Christmas season you want something kind of sweeter definitely more hallmark and honestly I'm just so surprised how much I'm enjoying it because I don't know I don't normally go for covers like this there's two dogs on there there's no dogs <laughs> 
in the story at all. But it's nice to know that I'm really enjoying this and I'll definitely read more books from her. Um, we'll see how the second half goes, but I anticipate enjoying it still. It's not super Christmassy because Hank is mostly at the church and then um, Pete is in a bar. So there isn't really like Christmassy activities, at least not quite yet. It's not quite Christmas, but like they're not like going to a Christmas market or they're not drinking hot cocoa or buying presents like there's none of that yet i think it's more focused on the romance the other thing i want to mention is it's actually told from a grandmother telling the story to her grandkids which is super sweet and it's clear like she's one of the characters in the story so that's kind of a nice element it's set in the 70s which was surprising every time i'm reading it it doesn't feel like it's in the 70s like it feels like it could be any era honestly the only difference is they don't have cell phones or anything like that or internet but honestly there's no description of outfits or anything like that or settings that make it specifically 70s vibes so I don't know I just thought it was kind of odd and I couldn't help but wonder like did you write this like you know 30 years ago <laughs> I decided to release it now or even longer ago and now you're releasing it I don't know I just thought it was interesting but honestly it really reads like any decade there's nothing specific there was a moment where someone rattles off some like football players maybe the football like obviously the football players were from the 70s but like i that would have gone over my head anyways doesn't matter what decade it was from so yeah it's kind of interesting that it's said in the 70s but i think it's because a grandmother's telling the story and so on um yeah i'm really liking it and i will let you know how i feel later on so i actually have a lot to update today but um i actually finished the christmas spirit by debbie mccomber yeah i ended up liking this i think i enjoyed the first half more the problems I have with this one is mostly like some of the storylines or problems got resolved really quickly. There just wasn't enough time to fully develop certain plot lines. So it kind of reads like a Hallmark or like a Harlequin romance in that way where since the stories are so short, there just wasn't enough time to develop certain things or things felt more rushed is probably the thing I should say because there's two storylines plus there's like chapters in between from like the narrator's perspective because it is a Christmas story being told. It's just barely over 200 pages so each storyline is probably less than 100 pages so it is very rushed but I thought it was cute it was sweet it's very much a Christian romance I just thought that was so surprising I didn't know anything about that I wasn't expecting that from this author because it is traditionally published I know that going in but I really liked it in the end I'm gonna give it 3.5 stars so not quite four star because of those issues that I had I started and then finished Bad Luck Vampire by Lindsay Sands this is my first book in this series that I've read I tried the first book once where like I've read like a few pages barely even the first chapter and I wasn't really sure how I felt about it I was not nervous but I wasn't sure if this was gonna work because it is a series and this is book like 35 36 in this very long series that's been around for a long time but I read like a standalone so this is a vampire paranormal romance but I read more like a contemporary romance that kind of transitioned into um, romantic suspense. There is paranormal aspects, but it really felt like a contemporary novel because the vampire in this novel falls for a mortal woman who works in an insurance company and they meet at a wedding and even though it was a vampire wedding she didn't know it was a vampire wedding and they were kind of pretending it was a mortal wedding they were trying to keep up a, a facade because there was going to be mortals there in this world they don't call themselves vampires they call themselves immortals and even though they drink blood they kind of they <laughs> kind of bring like science into it to explain why they drink blood and how their bodies work and that comes more the second part of the novel but you know the vampires here are very much like good vampires the vampires that are falling in love with the women or female vampires falling in love with men they're all like good right like they're not bad they're not evil they're not doing bad things they're on the good side of society i guess it is a secret these vampires their identity isn't known to the mortal world and they do have some powers but like i said it just really 
very much read contemporary, at least in my opinion. There was some action, but not really. The story was about them falling in love at this wedding and then getting to know each other after the wedding. And then the suspense kind of picks up from there. Our heroine, her name is Sophie and his name is Alice Dare. He's Scottish. He's like a couple hundred years old, of course. And it's funny as well because his uncles are at this wedding and they're a big part of his life but he finds them annoying and they try to convince him to let them help him and obviously the uncles are very funny and kind of like stick their nose where they don't belong and so there's some like comedic things that happen in this novel obviously there's great chemistry another element of the series is it is uh, fated mates so Sophie is his fated mate um, they're destined for each other and he has to convince her to kind of like fall in love with him and see if they can become a pair. Sophie has had a lot of bad luck. That's why it's called Bad Luck Vampire. She herself has had a lot of bad luck. A lot of people that she has loved in her life has died. Her parents and some of her school friends and she's been engaged a few times and they all have died. I was like obsessed with this. I really loved it. I was very happy that it read like a standalone. I wasn't confused. Obviously there's other characters in here that probably have their own story and everything, but it didn't feel like forced in. The characters that were essential for the story didn't feel out of place. And sometimes you saw other couples. I don't know, like sometimes when you read a series out of order, you can tell that they're kind of like slotting in people for their own story but I never got that feeling for this so some problems I had was the very beginning I was very shocked <laughs> like literally the second page the R word was written out and I know it's not like a bad word or a slur but I think from being on the internet for so long now like I kind of view it that way and so just seeing it on page was just very like oh okay and it was kind of used flippantly the setup was Sophie was on a blind date and he was very pushy about her like having like an alcoholic beverage and she kept on saying no and he kept pushing it and she kind of flippantly said what are you like a date r word like and I don't know I just it didn't sit well like I under I just feel like that scene could have been written differently using different language implying the same thing without having to use that word am i being like super picky about this i don't know i just i feel like i don't come across that word ever even if there is like s a in novels itself i don't know i just was really kind of surprised by that especially in kind of like a light-hearted fun romance and literally like the second page so i don't know how i felt about that the other criticism is there's a villain speech at the end that's literally 20 pages long it was just almost comical just how long it was and unrealistic I don't know this is very campy sometimes and paranormal romances can be like that and so I didn't hate it too much it changed my opinion of the book a little bit but not enough to like dislike this like I would totally reread this again I thought it was a lot of fun I really enjoyed it it is a fast romance like it happens over like a few days but I would I ate this up I had a lot of fun I think Lindsay Sands is becoming an author that I really love so in the end I'm giving this 4.5 stars and finally, the last update I have for you is I got halfway through Things We Never Got Over by Lucy Score. I'm really enjoying this. I'm kind of surprised how much I am, but it's really good. I like it a lot. We are following Naomi. She's kind of down on her luck, especially at the beginning. She is a runaway bride. She's run away from her wedding, and you don't really know why at first. Slowly, that gets revealed throughout the novel. But she's a runaway bride, but also she runs to this small town where her sister is specifically her twin sister her twin sister said like i need help i need money can you come and she does her sister's problematic is that the right word like she is not trustworthy she steals she lies she manipulates people and um naomi has kind of always been there for her or like cleaned up the messes that she has made and so yet again she's doing that when she gets there people assume she is her sister and people in the small town do not like her sister she has burned a lot of bridges there and so when she comes to town people have the wrong impression of her when she gets there her sister steals her car and her money and leaves her daughter behind 
which Naomi didn't even realize she had a niece. And so she's kind of stuck in this situation without a car, without money, no place to go with this kid who's 11. We are introduced to Knox, who is um, one of the townies, and he has this confrontation with her, assuming she's her sister, and it's this like shouting match basically <laughs> between the two. He ends up kind of helping her. He's very much a grumpy hero, obviously. The grump part beginning, I found really hard. Like I still really like this book a lot, and I can see Lucy's score being a favorite author like I think I could read everything she writes because I'm really loving the story a lot my favorite parts is Naomi and her situation and getting to know her niece and trying to figure out what to do and how to live and she's very much like a fish out of water because she is living very differently than she did before like I said before she had a fiance she had a life she had a job and a house and was gonna get married, but now she's in a totally different path, totally different town, and living a totally different life. And I just love that, I, I, it's really interesting. I really like the story, and I definitely like the dynamic she's having with her niece and wanting to take care of this kid who has never been taken care of before, really. The romance, I kind of like it. Like I said, it's Grump Sunshine, but he is so grumpy and he is mean. Like that's definitely what I was feeling the beginning is just he's so mean and he like, shouts at her and yells at her and she kind of shouts back so i like the fact that she stands up for herself but <laughs> i remember the first few chapters i just felt like it was so loud for a book because they're just constantly shouting at each other and i just i don't know like it was hard to swallow but the other elements of the story i was falling in love with i was falling in love with the town and the other characters and so she definitely the author definitely like takes her time developing the town and the characters and the situations and like i'm really loving that part the romance is growing on me i feel like the beginning part is essential for possibly Knox's growth i'm personally hoping that's exactly what it is like if he transforms a lot and is a different person by the end then I probably could give this five stars if he doesn't change that much it will probably be more like a four sometimes the author has like the weirdest similes or descriptions and I'm just like so confused like why did you choose those words specifically i'm not understanding and some of the intimate scenes are a little cringy but i'm willing to overlook that have a really good time i'm excited for the other books in the series i'll definitely continue if i get a chance to so that's my update so i'm happy to report that i finally finished things we never got over by lucy score i ended up really enjoying this story it ended pretty good turn into a suspense plot which i usually always enjoy and i did like the suspense plot too it felt believable i've read a lot of romances where the suspense plot just kind of got thrown in and this didn't feel that way it was definitely a gradual build up from really the beginning of the story and so it worked well and i really enjoyed that part i enjoyed the breakup part as well like the third act breakup did it make sense yes and no but i still enjoyed that part of the story i didn't find it cringy or weird it kind of made sense i guess for the characters i ended up enjoying Knox by the end for i was gonna call her daisy naomi and you know his arc was definitely the more i don't want to say it was mostly focused on because naomi got her share of character growth as well his was definitely the biggest and he definitely softened near the end still himself but softened at least for naomi and i really liked this i think i'm going to give it 4.25 stars because there was slow moments in here that definitely made me a little bored i think that's the problem with having a really long romance is that there can be moments of dullness i hate to say it that way that can happen and it's very long but i did like the fact that the author really takes their time building out the story you definitely felt like you got to know the small town and the characters and i can see myself really enjoying another romance in this story and it just wasn't quite an absolute favorite of mine that's mostly why i'm giving a 4.25 it never quite felt like a five i feel like four is a little mean <laughs> and so that's why i'm kind of leaning towards like 4.25 because i still really enjoyed this a lot and it was like pushing a favorite, but just not quite there. The second epilogue, I didn't like. I didn't feel like it was necessary and extremely cheesy. <laughs> but that's just an epilogue, so. I 
started Twisted Love by Anna Wong and I really didn't like this. I ended up DNFing at 50%. I really tried, I really did. This one we're following, I think her name is Anna and then he's Alex. No, sorry, he's she's Ava, he's Alex. The hero had too many things going. I felt like he wasn't a focused character. I think the author just wanted too much and so it just made the story messy because he had too many things going so he was like had a brilliant mind he can never forget anything he just can't for i forget what it's called but he can't forget anything so he has like a brilliant mind he like made millions as a teen or something then his parents were murdered when he was young and so he's on a revenge plot to find the killer and then he also finished university young he's also like a millionaire bil billionaire i don't know like running a business like i don't know it's just it's a lot there's so much stuff and i just felt like when it comes to the main story it didn't fit because there's too many things i think if the author picked like one or two of those things and really focused on that and especially ones that paired well with the actual plot and the plot is his best friend lives next door to his sister so ava and I forgot the brother's name. They live next door to each other in the college town where they attend university. But the brother is going out of town for a year and so he asks Alex, his best friend, to live there, to look out for Ava. It's kind of been established that I don't think they have family, Ava and the brother, and so they look out for each other. So Alex agrees and he takes it very seriously and to the point where I think it's supposed to be like touch her and you die kind of vibes, but I didn't like it because there was one point where she's a photographer and so she was modeling for someone else, maybe scandally clad, but she was fully clothed. It wasn't like porn or anything, but he like freaked out on the guy that she was working with and deleted all the photos and forced her to stop working. I didn't like it. It was supposed to be like, is romantic the right word? I don't think so. You know, it's her choice, what she does with her body. No one can tell her what to do and it wasn't even that bad. So I don't know, I didn't like that. And then I was growing to like the romance at least a little bit, especially with like the next door neighbor and his grumpy sunshine. He's very grumpy and she's sunshiny. And I always liked that dynamic and I was growing to like it. But then halfway through we got to the intimate scene it's just not for me the intimate scenes it was definitely a dom submissive kind of dynamic and he would like humiliate her a little bit i don't like that either calling her names and like that was supposed to be the dynamic it's not my thing i didn't really like it and so i just thought okay i'm not really liking this romance i'm not liking these scenes either i might as well just stop so and plus i was listening to it on audiobook and so i kind of wonder if that contributed to the intimate scenes not working for me i don't know unfortunately it's not for me i guess when it comes to like bdsm like usually in these romances it's kind of established beforehand and i didn't get that vibe at all in this romance and so it just it did feel kind of jarring because it wasn't established before that this was the type of romance it was gonna be and i don't know if this technically classifies as that but it's not your traditional romance intimate scenes like it's not basic it's not generic it's a little bit more than that not for me so i dnf'd it it was only going to be at like a three star anyways but then with the intimate scenes didn't do it for me so it's a dnf for me lastly i have started the last honest woman which is a romance by nora roberts and the only reason i'm reading it is because it's part of the bind up in the moon dance which was on the mass market section of the bestsellers list that I'm working through. This bind up is a combination of books one and two in the O'Hurley series, which is a very old Harlequin <laughs> romance series from the 80s. And I didn't realize that's what it was gonna be. I have heard of this series before. I think it's one of Nora Roberts' earliest. It was, the first book was written in 1988. And it's been a really interesting reading experience. I'll be honest, I'm not having the best time. It's fine. So we're following Abby and also Dylan and Abby has two boys she lives on a farm she's like breeding horses she's a horse breeder and she's trying to like start her business she's only just started and she brings in this reporter to stay with her 
because she used to be married to this famous like NASCAR driver and he died. She keeps a lot of secrets kind of thing. She's trying to hide stuff about her marriage with her deceased husband. You know, she wasn't exactly what this writer was expecting. He thought she was going to be living it up in this glamorous house with lots of money and like servants and things like that. No, she's just like living in this humble house, trying to make a living by raising horses, raising her two boys who are like six and eight. So it's okay. It definitely reads dated. And that's the thing I'm finding so interesting about this is like, I've seen this before where these famous authors like Nora Roberts, probably Debbie McComber and Lindsay Sands and probably Daniel Steele, maybe not quite, but at least these authors that have older Harlequins or something like that where they repackage them and re-release them. So the fact that they're re-releasing <laughs> this story in this bind up, I just find it interesting because it does read a little dated. I don't know if this would be the exact edition that I'm reading because I'm reading the e-copy of the first book and then I'll move on to the second book. It's through my library so instead of having to buy the book itself I just thought I would read this version and you know I can tell it's from the 80s because the guy smokes in the house and I'm just like oh okay they rented a VCR to watch movies which is <laughs> super funny. No cell phones obviously. Some of the tropes are a little dated. He grabs her sometimes which makes me a little unsettled. I don't know how to explain it, where it's like, clearly she wants him, but she's withholding because that's what women are supposed to do. And like some of the narrative in his mind kind of says that, and I don't like that. Like, you know, no means no kind of thing, but it's just part of, I think that era of romance, especially like seventies and eighties, women, had to say no kind of thing or felt obligated to say no or at least that is the narrative and so men push more than they probably should nothing bad really happens but he's like grabbed her a few times i don't know i didn't like it really the thing that's really gripping me about the story though is learning about the ex husband not the ex one learning about the deceased husband there's this mystery of like okay what happened in her previous marriage you know there's been rumors that he has been unfaithful to her was this hot shot driver who lived the big life and then here's this woman living in the middle of nowhere raising her kids and like how does she get here kind of thing and it's very clear that like she has no money that's been keeping me reading the romance isn't really he like he's a good guy but I just don't like these tropes really he's staying with her which also is strange I don't know if that's normal but he's staying there with her in order to ask her questions and things like that to write this book there is some like she could say and he helps her he helps with the boys and so there is some possible romantic elements but I don't know it's just this is not clicking for me it's fine it, it's more fine than bad so like it's sitting at a three I want to learn about the, the husband more but I'm like kind of scared to read the second book I don't know I don't know if I want to the setup was interesting though like the prologue because the prologue is of her birth she's a triplet so it's the birth of her and her two sisters and the stories I think are about her and the siblings the next book is about her sister who's on Broadway and I guess her romance I'm starting to realize I think I do like modern day romances because this isn't quite doing it for me <laughs> So I have a little bit of bad news. I've decided not to continue on with, was it the last one who lied or whatever? The first book and the moon dance bind up. I've just decided to not read this collection. I don't know. I'm just not enjoying this story. I just read like a teeny bit more after my last update and I just realized I just, I'm scared I'm going to get in a reading slump. I wasn't really enjoying myself. Some things were revealed about the previous husband, the deceased husband. That was mostly what was keeping me reading was his story. The romance itself, I just, I didn't really care for it. Honestly, I didn't like the tropes that were portrayed. It just feels dated. Which is funny because I have read like older romances from the 80s or 90s, specifically in historical romance. You know, some of those tropes you kind of like anticipate, but the fact that I didn't anticipate these kind of older tropes bothered me. And they weren't nearly as bad as like I've said, I've read before, but for some reason in a contemporary setting, it just kind of threw me off and just is not of my taste. And I just am bored, honestly. I think contemporary 
stories written in the 80s are just not my thing. Do I recommend this? I don't know. I'll let you be the judge of that, but it is kind of strange that they're re-releasing this. I think it's like, what, 35 years later? This is so weird. <laughs> It's just not contemporary at all anymore. It's like a historical fiction now. Like, it's just, I don't know. It's so strange. Since this first part of the story or the first story kind of put me in this mood, I just am not even interested in the second story. I'm not done with Nora Roberts. I do really want to try her other stuff. I kind of think that maybe her more modern stories may be more appealing to me. And I do really want to try the In Death series. I wonder if it's you know, the suspense romance would be kind of more my thing, but these older Harlequins, not my thing. <laughs> so unfortunately it didn't work out. Oh, wow. Hopefully the next few stories will work better for me, but like, I'm kind of like in a slump right now, so it's not good. So I really need to come in here because I've read the majority of Divine Rivals by Rebecca Ross, and I'm like so obsessed with this book. <laughs> It's so good. It was really unexpected. I think I've heard mixed things about it. Mostly good, but some people just have given it like three or four stars. And I don't know. I wasn't really sure what to think. I don't read a lot of historical fiction during this time period. So I just wasn't sure what to think, but I should have known that I would have loved it. It's technically a fantasy, but it is a YA historical fiction fantasy. It's kind of set during World War One, World War Two, but it's a fantasy. So the war isn't between the US and Britain and Germany. It is, I don't even remember <laughs> what the country's name is. There's a war happening between two gods. So there's gods in this world and these two gods kind of have divided up the country. The war is happening between these two gods and people, the mortals are assisting them with the war. We're following Iris and Roman and they are writers at the local newspaper and they are rivals, hint the name Divine Rivals. They're both brand new to the paper and they're both competing for a position as a columnist where they're currently doing like classifies, obituaries and things like that. You're mostly falling from Iris's perspective, but you do get Roman's perspective as well. They're both quite young, like 18, 19, 20, but the majority of the perspective is from Iris and you're just following her along as she's working at the paper. Her brother has gone off to war. The dynamics between her and her mother are really strained. She experiences grief along the way and eventually she finds herself, even though she's competing with Roman at the newspaper, she eventually finds herself as a war correspondent. In the meantime, Roman and Iris are actually writing letters to each other. It's kind of like a you've got mail setup where she doesn't know who she's writing to, but he knows it's her. And since this world has gods and stuff, there is kind of like subtle magic and they each have magical wardrobe. The letters are being sent that way. So they're kind of getting to know each other through letters, but they also know each other from the newspaper. And I'm just love it so much. <laughs> and I think it's mostly the setting. I should have known I really like historical fiction because I do enjoy period dramas and miniseries and things like that, especially during this time period. This war setting, it kind of has a mixture of World War One and World War Two because there is like trench warfare, but there's also possibility of bombings, which I believe was more World War II. I think the author decided to do this fantasy world with these gods so that she has the flexibility to decide what she writes when it comes to the battles and conflicts in the novel. And also, so the focus is less on the war itself, but the effects of war. I think it just gives her the flexibility to do that. And also to allow diversity into the novel because there's people of color in here, there's queer relationships as well. If it was set during the 1910s or the 1940s in that time frame, she wouldn't be able to do that. So it kind of brings it a more modern twist while also having the feel of that era. So the era does have like, since they work at the newspaper, they're writing on their typewriters and there's phones, but it's only at people's houses. It definitely feels like that time period. Communication is harder to have because everything is written by letter. And I know I love the time period. It's one of my favorites. I also believe she decided to do a fantasy twist because then it feels less personal. There's something horrific about war knowing that 
the war is happening because of humans or the evil of humanity but here it's like the evilness of gods so i think it kind of brings a detached feel to it but you still feel the effects of what happens with war so you there are moments where you're at the front lines with the characters and also like in towns that are slightly removed from the front lines but are still highly affected. I'm really enjoying the story a lot. I'm falling in love with the romance. I wasn't sure at first, but it's definitely growing on me. And the tension is definitely coming to peak at the point that I'm reading. I'm almost done. Like I think I probably have like 50 pages left to go. We're at the final conflict that kind of like gave us a bit of hope thinking it was going to be over but there's another final thing happening and i'm kind of obsessed with it i know there's a sequel coming out and i have no idea what it's going to be about i don't know if it's the same characters or if it's going to be brand new characters i kind of hope it would be brand new characters but i don't know but i'm falling in love with this book it's going to be a five star and I'm so glad I picked it up. I started editing this vlog and I realized I never finished talking about Divine Rivals. Like I never concluded my thoughts after finishing it. The only thing further I have to say is that <laughs> the ending broke me and I was actually like really mad how it ended. I was so mad and from the ending I learned it's a continuation with the same characters. I <laughs> Honestly, don't understand why it couldn't just be a standalone because it definitely left on a cliffhanger. Tragic things happened, but it is what it is. <laughs> I do feel obligated to finish, but I was so broken that I was definitely like rewriting different endings for myself. And I kind of, I don't know, I wanted these characters to be happy and they made decisions that prevented their happiness. I'll just say that. And it just really frustrated me because of their choices. Some very tragic things happened. And so, yeah, it was um, still really good. Still really loved it. I don't know what book two is going to be like because at the end, the fantasy elements definitely started happening more, I guess you can say. I'm starting to wonder if like, the gods are actually placeholders for Jesus and Satan. I don't know, that's just my thoughts and my opinions. Based on what I kind of read at the end there, that was kind of the vibe I was getting. So I thought that was kind of interesting. But anyways, I still giving it five stars. Like I still absolutely loved it. Like I kind of can forgive the ending because I was just so obsessed with this book. So I do recommend it, but prepare to be destroyed and to read a second book. <laughs> so I did manage to finish one last book for this video and that is A Night Bane by Alex Astor. So this is book two in the Light Lark series. I guess you can say I have read Light Lark. I read it back during the summer of 2023. So it's been a little while, but I was really excited to get back into this world. I really had so much fun with book one. In the series, we're following Isla and it's a fantasy. I think it's kind of considered like a YA new adult fiction there's this island kingdom and this island kingdom is divided with smaller kingdoms in each kingdom the people there have a certain type of magic so there's wildlings which is our main character she is connected with nature nature magic manipulating trees and vines and dirt and rock and things like that and then there's nightshade i think they manipulate shadows there's moonlings who manipulate water and ice there's sunling which is sun starling which is i guess stars and stuff and then skyling which is flight and air this kingdom was cursed like hundreds of years ago and every 100 years the rulers of each nation get together to try and break this curse so it's her turn she's a brand new ruler i guess the last ruler died and so she's up to try to go to the centennial meet with the other leaders and try and break this curse the thing about isla is that she doesn't actually have powers the curse doesn't actually applic to her because the curse affects each mini kingdom in its own way but she still wants to go and to save her people from the curse that they're under this is very much a romantic fantasy it's a love triangle specifically it's between her and two other guys and the two other guys are each leaders from two other kingdoms i just had so much fun i enjoy this too book one i gave 4.5 five stars this one I'm giving about four stars it's interesting about the romance is because in book one it's kind of like she's kind of with someone and then the romance is developed with the other hero and then in this one it gets flipped she's kind of with the other hero that the romance got developed in book one but then the romance is developed 
with the other characters. So it's very much a love triangle. It kind of ends with like you still don't know who she's going to end up with and she kind of has to make a choice of course. And it's a fantasy world with magic. This one is very much a war book so she's like preparing for war. Her and the people she is helping. And the reason I'm giving it four stars is it was too much war stuff. It was just getting boring and kind of repetitive at least when it comes to the preparation. I just felt like it was a lot of filler. The romance is developed in like flashbacks and I was just constantly wanting to go back to the flashbacks. I wasn't interested in the development or preparation of war. It just got boring and tedious. So I'm gonna give this one four stars, but the Ryman's I absolutely love. I do have someone that I want her to end up with. Guess I'll have to wait and see how this concludes. So four stars. I think I read five books in total and then I DNF'd two books in this video. So the first book I finished was The Christmas Spirit. On here I gave it three stars. I would recommend it if you want like a Christian romance. Said The Christmas Time, clean kind of thing. Bad Luck Vampire, I ended up giving five stars, probably more like 4.5, but I absolutely loved it. I'm really excited to continue on with this series. Yeah, I have it five stars here. Twisted Love, I DNF'd, I did not like it. And unfortunately, I don't know if I'm gonna pick up any more from this author. It just kind of put me off, so I'm not really sure. Things We Never Got Over by Lucy Score. I have a four star here, which I think is about accurate, maybe 4.5, I'm not really enjoying it, but I think there was a little bit of lull moments for me. The Last Honest Woman, or the first short, the first novella in the Moon Dance bind up by Nora Roberts. This was a huge disappointment because this was my first Nora Roberts and so I'm like nervous about reading her books. I'm kind of wondering if I should read more for modern books or I don't know, like an actual novel. It's 250 pages, so it's kind of a novel, but I kind of wonder if it's more of a Harlequin. I don't know, I didn't really like it. Then I read Divine Rivals and I was like obsessed. I have it down for five stars, definitely recommend. It kind of ruined me from what I remember <laughs> and I was kind of mad the way it ended, but it was still really good and I absolutely loved it and gave it five stars. And then finally Nightbane, which I have down for four stars. So that is this video. I hope you really enjoyed it. If you think I should make other videos like this, comment down below. I'd love to know your thoughts and opinions about this video, about the books I've read. Have you read any of these books? If you have any book recommendations, let me know and leave some comments in down below. Thank you so much for watching and you know what? I want to keep reading. Bye.